Dinesh Sharma. I head the digital business for Eschan Group. Uh, on behalf of the group and Nanflix, let me extend a very warm welcome to all of you for this very special webinar today. As you know, at Eschan Group, our endeavor always has been to support you with best in quality products for content, whether in books or in digital solutions. Similarly, during this unprecedented crisis also, we have been engaged with all of you, our partner schools, parents, teachers, to ensure that teaching and learning continues. For example, we launched our mobile learning app called LearnFlix. All of you know LearnFlix is a comprehensive learning package for classes 6 to 10, which provides videos and animations for conceptual understanding, practice questions, summaries for preparation, assessments of difficult difficulty level varying from low to high, and also a personal remedial plan for the child. So all students of 6 to 10 can benefit from this. But not only this is a very good learning package for students, it's also a very important tool for teachers to use in their class. They can use it in the flipped classroom model or they can use for giving assignments, assessments, or even homework. We believe that every child should have access to good quality learning tools at a very affordable price. Hence, we have launched it at a very special price of 2,000 rupees for the entire class for entire year. And as you know, this is nearly one-tenth of any such competing product in the market. We believe this is going to be a big tool for teaching learning in today's environment. Similarly, if you look at our curriculum business milestone, you know, schools were closed, books didn't reach on time. But thanks to our team, April onwards, we brought the entire curriculum online, whether it is books, support material, digital content, or even teacher plans. And we integrated our app with the video conferencing solution so that you can conduct your classes uh, online. So I'm happy to share with you that all the 400 schools which were using Milestone were actually doing their teaching online as well as learning during the COVID times when the schools were actually closed. So our endeavor always have been to see how do we work closely with you irrespective of the times, irrespective of the situation and make sure that teaching and learning continues. It's the same spirit. We are doing a series of webinars where we can add value to teachers, school leaders and parents on relevant topics. And today, in fact, is one of the most special webinar that we have on the most relevant topic today. How do you lead your organization successfully during crisis times? And I don't think there's anybody else who is better than, better than this to talk about this. Somebody who has done this remarkably throughout his life, Mr. Saurav Ganguly, he actually needs no introduction. He's, suffice to say, he's one of the most successful captain of Indian cricket team, a great batsman, and now the president of BCCI. And to moderate this session, we also have Mr. Boria Mazumdar. All of us know him as a leading sports journalist of our country, but not many people know. He's a very good academician also. He's been a Rhodes Scholar and a doctorate from Oxford. And as per him, he's been a teacher always. So without taking any more time, I'll hand it over to Mr. Boria Mazumdar to take it forward. Thank you. Thanks, Vinay. Thanks for having uh, both of us uh, on behalf of Saurav and me. S. Chand group, as we know, I mean, 80 years of legacy. If there's one commonality here between all of us, Vinay, Priya, Saurav, me, we've all read S. Chand school textbooks while growing up. Each one of us. And today we use their digital learning me mechanisms for our children, for our students. Coming to Saurav, Saurav, you are, you are born in a very peculiar time zone and space. Why? Because God always writes your script in a unique manner. When you decided, when you became captain of the Indian cricket team in 2000, match fixing happens. Now, no one knew match fixing will happen. All of us were plunged into crisis. Everybody started doubting the game. Everybody said we need one leader to steer cricket out of this crisis. Thank God you did because you have exceptional ability. 20 years down the line, we wanted a cricketer to lead BCCI who is blue blood and there you come 23rd of October, you know, a BCCI president with a computer, a laptop in his uh, shoulder, wearing an India blazer, telling the whole country, this is a revised and a changed BCCI, just like S. Chan Group is, under these COVID times with their digital and, and, and all of these new learning mechanisms. And we thought, now Saurav Ganguly has a good BCCI tenure. What happens? COVID. And again, the greatest leadership challenge is posed in front of you. Interestingly, again, you are dealing with this with aplomb. The IPL will happen. You have put mechanisms in place. Someone writes your script who is up there. How do you deal with such unprecedented challenges? And how do you keep winning 
such unprecedented challenges. Firstly, thank you, Boria. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Priya, Vinay. Uh, I've been associated with uh, Schan for a long period now. It's almost three years, and I'm extremely proud to be a part of of, of the wonderful group, uh, especially Priya, who I think has been remarkable with the way she's gone about the job in the last three years. And actually, I've developed a relationship like family with Vinay, with Priya, and and even the owner. So, from for me, the association. has been uh, exemplary and uh, from, on behalf of eschand i thank borey also to be a part of this uh, wonderful event he's hosted a lot of similar sort of programs uh, in different different facets of life whether it's sports whether it's education whether it's in the corporate world and eschand is extremely happy to have you on board with us you know for me uh, for me um, you know uh, i feel life without a challenge is 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 useless and i use the word useless because you know when i finished playing when i finished playing for india and and i was doing so many other things actually i had become more busy after i finished playing and because when i was playing it was only cricket and after i left the sport there were so many other things to do so when somebody asked me you know you played so much uh, life's been so good even after you've been retired what is it that you miss i said you know the most important thing what i miss is that waking up every morning with the nervousness with the tension that at 6:30 in the morning you get up you don't know what's going to be the result at the end of the day the day decided whether you were a winner or a loser whether you were successful or whether you were not successful mm-hmm. and i think that challenge kept me going and i used to keep saying people that when i hit the cover drive through the offside and it went perfectly in between the fielder there was nothing better and no more nothing more satisfying than all of of my life and i think probably till the time i live that those moments will always be the best moments of my life and i think challenges are important for everyone and I, there is no life without challenges in business they say we want the business to be the best all the time but it doesn't happen it doesn't happen for anyone you know it it's it's you have to understand the situation accept the challenge and believe in yourself to uh, to uh, take take it forward and be successful i think being successful uh creating a winning combination leadership has various aspects and uh, i i uh, over a period of time had realized that uh, a lot of these aspects are very important to be successful because we all played a team sport i was not a tennis player or a table tennis player where my individual performances decided the team's fate or or, or otherwise and it's similar in business similar in the corporate world similar with eschan similar with all the students here you know we are all in a team game and one of the others responsibilities acts influences the result and the outcome so from that point of view it is very important that you have certain <clears throat> certain checklist certain way of going about jobs certain way of leading institutions certain way of leading cricket team certain way of leading corporate world to be successful you know <clears throat> for me the most important important criteria in leadership and most important aspect of of being successful is to have the right people around you and it works in all facets of the game when you are when you lead the biggest corporate in the ambani's or when you lead the national cricket team or you lead a national football team it's 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 the it's the group which makes you successful so i think identification of of the people who work with you is is very very important uh, and in having said that there's no rocket science to identifying the right people you know it's not like a temperature it's not like a covid situation at the moment you do your your swab test and you know no test and it comes out positive or it's like temperature you bring in a thermometer you see it's 95 96 you're happy you see it's 102 103 you call the doctor so it's it's about gut feel it's about your eye it's about your gut feel and that is balanced by performances from the players so for me it was important that i identified the right talent boria yeah you wanted to say something okay 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 you know what what you what you just said is is fascinating because uh, in this case in in the s chan group case they are actually the virtual team member when covid happened in march we the student fraternity the academic fraternity the teaching fraternity which is millions plus we were left in a lurch with schools closed colleges closed educational curriculums disrupted all of a sudden we have a partner in this case the s chan group which innovates brings in digital learning tools builds in innovative experiences what is very important they make learning fun for students and when i think back to you the australian tour of 2000 2001 
you all of a sudden bridge the gap between the senior and the junior. You all of a sudden create a dressing room where there is no senior culture, where everybody becomes harmonious, where everybody aspires to a certain goal of success. So can you outline that? I mean, when you, because you were also a young man who has built, you know, sort of grew up through the, through, through the ranks and took over the captaincy of the Indian cricket team. And all of a sudden you are exposed to the best in the world, the Australian team of 2000, 2001. Tell me, was it daunting? How did you overcome that challenge when you played a young 17-year-old Harbhajan Singh and you took that part? It, it, it's fascinating how you've done all of these things, sort of. So tell me about that. It, it's a challenge, yes. And I think you only get better when you play with the best. I've always said that, you know, when you play at a certain standard, you become to that standard. Or when you work at a certain standard, you become of that standard. And that's why it's important that you keep track with the best in the business because it helps you to grow. It helps you to become better. It's not arrogance. It's not you're trying to say the world that, hey, listen, I may not be as good enough, but I still want to rub shoulders with the best in the world and think myself to be the best. I don't think so. It actually helps you upgrade yourself. It actually helps you realize where you stand, what's your weaknesses and how you become better. As I said, for me, identification of the talent was very important. The likes of Zaheed, Harbhajan and all these players came in during that era. MS Dhoni, Virat, uh, Virendra Sehwag, you know, VVS Lakshman and all these players came in during that era. And for me, it was important that along with identifying those players, you allowed them to perform without any fear. I think in a world today where we have so much competition and so much uh, taste for success, and especially in a country like India, where there is so much talent, and when this it, it, in a cricket team, Borea, you know how, how hard it is to continue for a long period of time. Yeah. You know, only 11 can play out of the millions who play cricket. And India is such a talented country. You know, a lot of people ask me, what's the future of Indian cricket? I said, listen, this country will be at the top of the sport for the next 50 years. Because when you wake up on a Saturday morning, when you wake up on a Sunday morning, you go to Delhi, you go to Bombay, you go to Bangalore, you go to Calcutta, you see the kids on the scooters and the bikes of their fathers with the cricket kit and bat going to play the sport. Until that interest, until that attachment to the game continues, India will keep producing players. So for me, that Australia tour was about letting those players be free. During my growing up days as a player, and a lot of my leadership skills came in from, from my experiences as a young player. And I realized that, you know, to perform, to be, to be able to be at, at your best, you had to set somebody mentally free. There should not be any fear of failure. Nobody comes in this world to fail. You know, look at S. Chand. 80 years they've been in the business. 80 years they have developed, they have improved, they've got in innovations. As, as we speak about the learn flicks and digital education today, they have evolved. So everybody wants to fail and everybody wants to succeed. And when you, when you, when you bring young players on the table, you have to take that fear factor away. You cannot think what the world thinks about you. You cannot think what the captain thinks about you. You cannot think what the media thinks about you. All you should think it's about the, about that cricket ball coming out of the bowler's hand, and that yes. culture needs to come out and come in every organization. That all you need to all you need to know is how to be successful by work, and not have that fear of failure. Brilliant, brilliant. In fact, if I if I relate this to the S Chan group, just think about it. What did Saurav just say? That you have to free yourself of the fear of failure. When March happened, a lot of us were underprepared for online education. Teachers were underprepared. Students were underprepared. Tools weren't there. Each of us were like, okay, only the privileged. Only the privileged will have access to this. Affordability was the question. When I just made that point about affordability, what has happened now? And, and I will give you a very specific example. Could Saurav Ganguly have physically gone and taught 5,000 students attending this Zoom webinar? No. It is not possible for Saurav Ganguly to physically travel and, and take a class for 5,000 students. Digital learning has made it possible. You know, use this as an opportunity. Why and how? Six months down the line when you have a vaccine or a therapy, what you will think is you want to still, you know, reach out to your teacher. You can do that online with the s Chand app. Use the learn, click, you know, all of the new learning mechanisms. So in effect, you will combine the offline and the online. And they have been able to give you that. That is the innovation that Saurav did as far as the Indian cricket team. And that is the innovation that we are seeing in the education space. Saurav leading the organization in a time of crisis. Talk about BCCI. This is the whole world is all of a sudden looking at you. Football has started. 
cricket has started in the in the english uh, context with england west indies in a bio safety bubble all of us are reading every day about the ipl and the whole world is looking at you to give them a tournament which will make you positive and happy and stuff is that a daunting leadership challenge because again if you fail everyone will point at you and say oh you know what why did he do it so you are in this peculiar conundrum at one end you have to give a billion plus the ipl to satisfy them and keep them at home and make them smile on the other end you cannot fail because if you do all of us will point to saurav ganguly the leader and say oh why did he have to lead us down that path how daunting is that and how are you shaping up to that no it's it's daunting yes it's daunting to a certain extent but you, but at the end of the day uh, you know you have to do it you know i've been following the social media following everything for for a period of time and and everybody wants sports to come back i read your uh, message on twitter saying that how happy you were when the first test in england started uh, in in uh, in southampton about two weeks ago people I, in during my life i've not seen a period for four or five months without any active sports on television and the sports have slowly started cricket has started tennis will be happening in america as vijay said at the start of the show that uh, delhi is on the way down so there is hope there is hope and we and um, we will want to host the ipl because at the end of the day life needs to come back we know the challenges we know what is going to happen uh, and what facilities and what uh, precautions we need to take in terms of the medical part of of every every team every player the franchises are very keen to host the ipl so everything everything has a risk you know when s chance started this business 80 years ago there was a risk of not being successful you know when i picked that cricket bat i picked in 1996 when i played the first test match in london and there was a pitched up delivery half volley to dominic cock which i hit through the offside and went for four you know it, there's a risk of nicking that to the first slip or the second slip and i think that's where self belief comes in which is one another important aspect of another important aspect of leadership about about believing and and uh, and and thinking it could happen because if you if you believe that things will happen it will happen and it works like magic i have been in very similar situations uh, you know i'll tell you a lovely story one of one of the famous film stars one of the famous film stars uh, was a very dear friend of mine and one of one afternoon in an ipl game we were sitting and and and, and having a chat around with because it was raining outside and um, i asked him that you know how has it made you successful over a long period of time and it's a funny story we had shoaib akhtar in the in the team and he would look at the film star and he would just be dazed and he was what do you look at him he's not he's not the most pretty looking woman around and not not katrina kaif or, or 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 whoever it is and you just keep looking at him till he said no he does the, he does great movies he's got such a huge fan following from where i come from so i asked him that what made you successful he said sort of you know when i came when i came to bombay i had no godfather i did not belong to the khans i did not belong to the kapoors i did not have an easy access uh, to the film world i used to stay in a one bed flat and now i have probably the biggest apartment in uh, biggest apartment uh, in, uh, in 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 bandra and uh, you know I used to stay in a one-bed flat, and and I used to look at myself in the mirror. I was not as talented as a Rithik Roshan. I was not as talented as as um, as a Salman Khan. But I used to wake up every morning. I used to wake up every morning and talk to myself, and I used to tell myself, and I used to tell myself every morning that you know I would be the best with whatever I have. I used to stand in front of the mirror. and talk to myself and listen i i may not be the most good looking person in the world i may not be able to dance like somebody else i may not have six packs like somebody else but i am what i am and i'm going to make the best of my ability and be the best of what i am all of us who are li- listening this and all of us who are a part of this cannot have the same ability you know i never played the straight drive like sachin or i or sachin never played the cover drive like i did but we batted together we batted together and scored all those runs and we played the way we knew from each end and made india successful so the so self belief is very important you know when you, when we were growing up all of you must have heard that you know they used to say if you if you believe you can you can it's a very simple word but you know the word has a lot of power the word has a lot of magic in it to help people recover from from ordinary players ordinary human beings to be successful ones 
it is very important that for every individual in this room whether he's a student whether he's a corporate boss whether he's out to play ranji trophy whether he's out to play his first test match uh, you know for him it's important that he wakes up and believes that i am going to score runs you know when i got dropped in 2006 uh, everybody used to ask me that what is it when you came back you played so well and blah 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 how you could get those runs under so much pressure i said you know when i walked out into the middle with a bat it was just me and all those 10 years of work of mine made me believe that with the bat in hand i will score runs and nobody can stop that individual faith in your journey to success is so important everybody will not be a tendulkar everybody will not be a shahrukh khan everybody will not be a aziz prem ji or a ratan tata or a mukesh ambani but be the best in whatever you do and that is possible Fantastic. that is possible with faith that is possible with belief and it's possible with hard work absolutely absolutely in fact on that note let me say this that you know when our teachers face this covid pandemic and i have spoken to a cross section of teachers from across the world university teachers college teachers school teachers none of them were confident as to what lay ahead four months down the line exactly like our doctors have learned to treat covid look at how our teachers are doing look at how our students are doing how many of you watching this webinar would have thought in january in february that you would be in a webinar with india's best perhaps the world's best listening to an academic session facilitated by an educational provider which is the leading one in the country for the last 80 years and enjoying a session a leadership a leadership session which is also a lesson in life folks this is not simply a leadership session it is not it is a life session what he is giving us are life lessons and you know where where i and, and i by the way it's my habit i've gone through the s charm group app and i've gone through all of their facilities you know what stands out what stands out is how they have made learning fun exactly like the way saurav ganguly made indian cricket enjoyable in that dressing room for the senior and the junior s chan group has made learning fun for the child it is not a drudgery that he or she has to do homework so when saurav does that ad and says priya aap to pura din mobile phone pe lage rehte ho and she says i am with the learning app absolutely it allows you to do fun things it allows you to enjoy your academia it allows you to enjoy your scholarship and that is what has been made possible by this group so uh, uh, how important is that i mean you know and here when you were captain in the indian cricket team it was still easy you were captaining an indian cricket team which only was india now while you are bcci this is a global role because the bcci is the strongest in the world the bcci has to lead world cricket the ipl is a global tournament it involves global superstars how can you lead an organization in these tough times and give every one of us the confidence that yes you know what i am sort of ganguly i am telling you that yes as long as i put this together and that's your magnetic charm that's the charm that's the leadership that you bring to the table and i've said to you this you are blue blood if you stand here and i can take names a david warner an english player a new zealand player a caribbean player says oh if saurav ganguly is putting this together as leader then it says i will travel tell me about that does that i mean when you do that level of a global leadership role exactly like these guys are doing in the educational space with millions of people empowering students empowering teachers that must leave you with a tremendous sense of happiness at the end of the day yeah it does and i think as you said as you very rightly said i just take forward to what you what you just said for me leadership means credibility and trust and you can only be a good leader if you and only be only survive for a long period of time if people have trust in you and it's similar to as chand you don't you don't keep making books and digital education and stay in the education world for 80 years without having credibility and without having the trust of the people and i think for leadership that is very very important because when you when you deliver day in day out that's why they say longevity is one of the biggest reasons of success and and i think when you keep delivering it day in day out you feel that people start believing in you and i think it's a similar situation with eschan and i'll i'll tell you a small story when when i was captain in the year 2003 and we were going to australia it was a huge tournament and and huge series for us and when i became captain um one thing which i wanted to do was to play well away from home 
because we always played brilliantly in India because the wickets would spin. We had the best spinners in the world and we would beat any team hands down. So for the challenge for us, to be a, for me as a leader and to be something different from what the rest of the world had done for that period, the rest of the country had done over a period of time, was to go away and play well in Australia. I remember a selection meeting before we were before we were going for the trip and there was a discussion on Anil Kumble. And obviously Kumble was, a, was an absolute champion. You know, people talk about Sachin. Sachin is probably the, the greatest I've seen. Anil Kumble is right up there as well in terms of being a match winner for India, the number of matches he's won and, 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 and all these aspects. Uh, the selection, I knew at the, before the selection meeting that there would be a very tough discussion on Anil Kumble. And Anil Kumble would not make it to the trip to Australia if I don't put my foot down. I did put my foot down. I, at one stage, my coach said, sort of, let's go with another spinner and let's listen to the selector. So I said, you know, it cannot happen because I knew if I left Kumble back, he may not have played for India again. So Anil Kumble went on to the trip. As I, as I signed that captain's sheet, the team sheet, one of the selectors, I remember telling me that, you know, if India doesn't play well in Australia, and, and if the team comes back unsuccessful, we look after you first before we take care of Anil Kumble. And the rest, what happened was for everyone to know. Anil had an outstanding series. I remember the day four, day five of the Sydney test, when we competed with Australia and we dominated Australia right throughout those four test matches. On the morning of the test, I walked up to Anil and said, Anil, we need eight wickets to create history, win a series 2-1 in Australia. And... <clears throat> What do I do with the bowling? He said, sort of, we have 90 overs to get eight wickets. You worry about the 45 overs from the other end. I'll worry about the 45 overs from my end. You know, because, because I know what was discussed in that selection meeting had got, had got to Anil. And he knew that he had his captain's faith. He had his captain's backing to, for him to do well. He had one of the most outstanding series in Australia, the best he had in Australia in his career. He finished that year with the ICC Player of the Year with 75 test wickets. And the reason I say this is because in your journey to be successful over a long period of time, to create one of the best units, to create a successful venture, as you said, with the IPL and as you said, with the uh, with uh, with captainship or with, with Chaya Prakashani over this 80, year, 80, 80 years period, there are times when the best in the business will have will have a slump. Everybody in a long period of time cannot, cannot be in that graph which is up all the time. And I think that's where leadership comes in. You show faith in the best and the best will show faith in you. I never believed in, in, the, in the leadership culture of my way, highway. Yes, somebody will have to make a place for the other in a competitive world. But there is a method to it. There is a method to the madness. And by this, by this way, not only did I create a trust on it, that if you, if you perform in this team, if you stand up in this team, you will be rewarded. I also sent a message to everyone around because, you know, it's a small world. Nothing stays within. I sent a message to everyone around in the team that if you perform, if you play well, the captain will stand with you. And I think that is very important in leadership. We, we stand as a wall between the selectors and the players. And it's very important that the right message, the right communication go, goes to the people who you deal with, whether it's in the corporate world, whether it's in the world of sport. We have this huge, huge habit in our culture not to face the truth. If you want to sack someone, we just give him another story. If you want to drop someone, we give him another story. But if you want to keep an employee, if you want to get the best out of an employee, if you want to get the best out of player, it's very important to give him the right story and stick to it. It may be that you're not good enough. Now today I can go, I, I could have gone to X and said, listen, you, you're not the best player against fast bowling. And this is where we stand. We can't have you, but yes, if you, if you improve and you become better, we will have you back. And the same thing happened with Virinder Sevag in 1999 when he played against Pakistan and didn't get a run in that, in that game. He came to me and said, what do I lack? I said, if you want to play well against fast bowling, if you want to play for India, you have to play well against fast bowling. That was 1999. And one year later, I saw him play a Ranji Trophy game against a genuine pace attack and he batted brilliantly. I remember going up to him and said that I'll pick you on the tour of South Africa. 
because I believe you can play fast bowling now. He got a hundred on debut. He became one of the greatest openers of all time India has ever produced, along with Sunil Gavaskar. And I and I and I personally believe it was because the communication was honest, the picture was the truth, and that allowed him to become a better player because he himself within knew that he was he was he was slow when it came to genuine pace. He worked on it. He got better and came back as a world champion. I think that's very very important in leadership. True, true, and and in this case, it is so very apt for education also. I mean, think about this. You know, with with online, you can reach to so many thousands, so many million more people. Think about India. I mean, we keep talking about our prime minister saying we will become the next knowledge superpower of the world, and we have the potential. How on earth can you do that only offline? You can't. Even if you have, you know, the very best minds, you will only have finite resources of going to a school or going to a classroom or going to a college. You cannot. But with online and the mesh between online and offline, like the way S Chand Group is doing, try that app. It's so much fun. I mean, when I do it with my daughter at home, I, I obviously did not do this earlier. I have now started doing it. It is tremendous fun to teach. It is tremendous fun to engage. It is tremendous fun. The moment you make education, the moment you make learning fun, the moment you make it entertaining, like the way these guys have been able to do, you are empowering people. And 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 here, I, I that is my next question for Saurabh. They are the tool for the teachers, and here they don't have an ego. They are providing multiple platforms for the teachers. Adaptability is an issue. Teachers are using the best. Trying to use what is working for them into creating a product which they are passing on to students. Sort of as BCCI boss, you are not simply BCCI boss. You are also one of the best captains ever. When you deal with a Virat Kohli, he too is leader. Now each of you have an ego. When sort of Ganguly has an ego, he's a successful professional. Virat Kohli, hugely successful, has an ego. How do you deal there? I mean, two superstar people sitting in the same room, drawing out a blueprint for India. India goes to Australia. India does the IPL. you know two greatest captains coming together how do you balance that out and this is fascinating because every educationist if someone comes to me today and says oh you know what boria you got to use this and i will say oh i've got a phd from oxford i know everything but that's where it becomes important for me to be able to learn how do you deal with egos sorab and how do you pass on message as a leader see i'll tell you one thing if you want to be a leader and if you want to make a change you have to leave the ego outside the room before you enter that room and i do that in every discussion i have with someone i look at the best interest of the organization the best interest of the team and i can tell you i have no egos and and i and i've interacted with virat kohli a number of times he's the same when your intention is to be have the best for the organization i don't think ego comes in between yes you may have differences of opinion which is healthy even when i was captain of india i had differences of opinion you know from my seniors for such in whether rahul or whether anil you know they would come and tell me that this is the way they felt this would be would be correct and the right way to go but at the end of the day i i would go back to my room and say listen i have been given the job to lead this national team at the end of the day it's my gut feeling yes i have taken i have taken opinions from everyone but i will do what i feel is right for indian cricket because i have been given that responsibility to do it to do what is the correct thing for indian cricket and i thoroughly enjoyed working with virat kohli in this last 8 9 months of my tenure as pcc president because he's been very receptive you know when i came in a lot of people said and i've said that a repeated number of times on media that you know virat uh, was not very keen on pink test pink ball cricket and it took me just one minute to get to speak to him and he agreed and we had one of the best test matches at eden gardens uh, after a long long time you know who thought Test matches will bring sixty thousand people uh, to watch. We 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 will be having more day night test matches and take this cricket forward. So I don't have any ego, and I think maybe that's one of my characters. I leave it back in the room before I take any, any come to any discussion because I feel the organization is the most important. It's not about Ganguly. It's not about Virat Kohli. It's not about Dravid. It's about Indian cricket, and all of us will have to sit together. and take indian cricket forward and i think i firmly believe in the that's the way i led my uh, led as a captain uh, you know i have had altercations with with a player and you know, i have had people turning up to me and say why am i not picked and i loved those sort of cricketers you know i i, I had ashish nehra in the side who's my best friend 
And every time I would leave him out, you, I knew that 10 o'clock in the night, the doorbell of my hotel room would ring. He would come in those Delhi sneakers, which is available in, in Karol Bagh for 35 rupees. He'll come in his shorts. He'll come in a t-shirt and I'll have a coffee in hand. And fortunately, he carried a coffee for me also because he realized that I'm the only person who would listen to his rubbish for half an hour. And that cannot happen without a coffee. So he would carry my carry the coffee and would tell me that why is he better than everyone? Why is he should be in the team? Why I, I am wrong? He would come for half an hour with a lovely cappuccino in hand and tell the captain that he was wrong because he did not pick him in that game. But I loved those sort of players. You know, I loved players who wanted to play. I loved players who wanted to bowl fast. You know, the 19, 2003 World Cup, Ashi slipped in Peter Maritzburg when he was bowling. And he had a massive swollen ankle. I went up to him and said, I used to call him Ashu. He had a solution for every problem in the world. And he was the, he was the, he was the jackal of the team, Dr. Jackal of the team, who would solve every problem without, without a fuss. So I went up to went up to Ashu and said, Ashu, your ankle is so swollen. What do you want to do? It's a big World Cup. We need another fast bowler. Do we get in a replacement? He said, No, no, no. I'm completely fine, and I'm going to bowl fast. I said, How? Your ankle is swollen this big. He said, You give me next game. If I don't bowl 150, 145, 150, you send me back. And I can tell you, Borea, he bowled that. You 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 saw that World Cup as well. He bowled at 145, 150 right throughout the tournament. Got six for 21 in England, and I loved those sort of players. You know, I would love somebody to come and tell me, and why am I not picked? Because I'm good. Because you only win by being good. You only be a successful uh, career by being a good student, by being a good professional. There is no solution to that. You cannot sit in the dressing room and score runs. You cannot sit in the dressing room and pick wickets. You cannot sit in the dressing room and win matches. So Beautiful. I needed, I needed that sort of players. Beautiful. And that, that game that Saurav is referring to, that England game, Ashish Nehra coming and, and taking England away. I mean, what a spell that was in South Africa. Absolutely magical World Cup. India losing to Australia, 125 all out. You know, people were throwing stuff at uh, cricketers' houses. Saurav Ganguly turns it around first, one after the other. Eight games, beating Pakistan, Centurion, first March. And then that Sri Lanka game, then that New Zealand game. India was on a roll. Sachin Tendulkar, what amazing batsmanship. Saurav Ganguly, 300s. We can keep rattling on and on and on. But what is the lesson for every student and teacher hearing this? Don't leave it to anyone. Don't leave it to anyone. It is about you in these times of the pandemic. Do you believe? That with the resources that have been made available to you, 1918 Spanish flu, there was no S. Chandan group, you know, to allow you to use digital learning. Students had to suffer. Today you have it. Today you can actually engage with the very, very best in the world. And having taught in the United States, in Canada, in Australia, in England, I can tell you that the facilities you now have, the digital resources you now have, the e-learning you now have, the innovations you now have in the education space is getting you ready internationally. Whether it is the K-12, whether it is the cl class 6 to 12, whether it is undergraduate, and by the way, they now have the whole gamut that will ready make you ready for the very best in the world, just like Saurabh Ganguly did. And that's what makes me proud about India, a homegrown company getting you ready for the best in the world, to embrace the best world practices in the educational sphere. Because this is how you will win. Eventually, the pandemic will lose to science. And eventually, the pandemic will lose to civilization because of people like Saurav Ganguly, because of institutions which promote knowledge. That's how it is. Has to be. Saurav, in five minutes' time, I will start uh, asking you a few questions which have been sent by our students. So a couple more before I go to that. One, you know, when each of us have felt down, and it is bound to be. Uh, mentally nervous, will our jobs go? Will, uh, say for teachers, will things come to a standstill? A student, what about the examination? I don't know when it will happen. Mentally, I'm down. I have depression. I have a negative feeling. I'm sure you've also gone through that. How does one overcome that sort of as a leader? Because here you are not speaking for sort of Ganguly, you're speaking for the fraternity of world cricket. There is the groundsman, there is the junior cricketer, there's the women, uh, uh, women cricketers. Everyone is doubting what will happen. How do you deal with that crisis as leader? Well, as you were saying, you just said five minutes. Uh, I would have told you that it's very important to discuss what happens when the chips are down, as you rightly did. You know, chips will be down for everyone. I remember getting dropped in 2005 when I was captain of the national team and I got 100 in the test match and never captained again. Uh, 
and I had 10,000 runs in, in, in 10 years, not even 10 years, in nine and a half years in international cricket. The only person who got as much runs, and I'm not saying more, the only person who got as much runs in one-day cricket as I did during the era was Sachin Tendulkar. And still I got left out of the, of the national team for about four, four, five months. I remember sitting in the drawing room one Sunday and my father came up to me and said, you know, you've not played for India for the last two, three months. The newspapers don't have a good thing to write about you because the word is that the coach doesn't want you inside. I said, yes, I've been reading that. So what? He says, you know, uh, you think about it, whether you still want to do it or you still don't want to do it because you've achieved so much over a long period of time. I heard my dad for the first day, didn't tell him anything. Again, the next Sunday, he came back to me and said when India was winning and, and things were happening, we were beating Sri Lanka at home. And uh, my dad came back again and said, what have you thought? I said, listen, I've got two options in life. I was 33 years of age then. I said, either I sit back and, uh, and say that I've achieved enough and not try. And when I become at the age, when I get to an age of 40, 41 or 42, when I won't be able to play that sport again, I don't want to get sit back and say to myself that when the chips were down, you did not try enough. I said, I'm going to give it a try. I know Indian cricket a bit more than what you did, what you do. And uh, I will see if I don't play, I don't play. Because I knew India was supposed to go to Australia, uh, South Africa, four months down the line. So I was, I was waiting for the trip because I knew that's where real cricket would happen with genuine pace and genuine bounce. As happened, I went to South Africa. Uh, I remember a journalist when I got picked for the tour of South Africa coming and telling me that why South Africa, India wouldn't have done well. Uh, batting slots would have been open. West Indies was coming to India after that. You would have played in India and got runs. I remember telling him one thing. I said, you know, I'm just 33 years old. I want to play for another five, six years. And the only way I can become a regular member for the next five, six years, if I go to South Africa and score runs. I went to South Africa. I scored the most runs on the tour by an Indian batsman. And the reason I say this, the reason I told that to him was, you know, if I get runs against space, bounce and tough conditions, I will leave a mark on my captain. He said, how? He will know that every time when it's quick, every time when it's difficult, this man stands up. It will not be the case when I score a couple of hundreds against the West Indies in India. I kept playing after that. I came back. I kept playing after that. I played my first one day game against the West Indies. I got 98. I was unfortunately run out at 98 or else I would have got 100. The reason I say to all, I say this to all of you is because, you know, in everyone's career, when you are a professional and when you work at the top level, at the highest level, even the prime minister of the country stays for two terms, 10 years. The prime minister of America stays for only eight years. You cannot have a third term. So when the, when, when, because all, all of us, when we grow up, we need a shoulder around us. It's very typical of Indians, you know, we, we, are, we are generally very conservative. Most of people of our generation, your generation, have grown up in conservative atmosphere. It's not like the kids today. So we all want an arm around the shoulder to say, hey, listen, I'm with you. Hey, listen, I'm supporting you. I believe in you. But there are times when you get into a situation like I was, that the coach was not very keen on having you in the team. The main chairman of selectors was not very keen in having you in your side. And all you had was your own talent. All, all you had was your own ability and the cricket bat in hand. When all of you here get to that situation, when, when you keep giving interviews and you get rejected in the jobs, you keep working for somebody for a long period of time and he asks you to leave. When you work under a boss who is an idiot, who has, who is, who has no respect and value for your efforts, value for your time, value for your energy, value for your future. It is you who can see you through. And I can give it to you in guarantee. And I'll tell you a small instant. When I finished in the year 2000, early 2009 and 2008, I remember one of the greatest players of all time. I went up to him and said, you know, I've decided to retire after the series. He 
told me I should not, but I said I will. One thing he told me, he said, this is the best I've seen you play in the last four years. And the reason I tell all of you, tell you this story is, there are times in your life when there won't be a shoulder around you. There are times in your life when your boss will not believe in you. But if you believe in yourself, you can still be successful. Brilliant. I knew, I knew that every series could be my last. If every second one day game, I will be asked questions if I fail. But I had so much faith in my ability and I had worked so hard to be successful that my level of performance, my level of uh, execution went a couple of notches higher. And it's going to happen. Let me finish, Buri. I'll take a minute of yours. And, and, and it's going to happen to you also. That when you realize that it's your own ability and there is nobody to support you, your talent, your ability becomes double. Your talent and ability becomes even better to be successful. So don't put your head down when somebody else thinks you're not, you're not, you're not good enough and you won't be successful. Your problem will start when you think you will not be able to do it. So be careful of it. I wasn't stopping you. I was just doing this saying brilliant. That's what I was trying to do. It is fantastic. It is fantastic. In fact, what is the message there? The message is during these COVID times, when you are in doubt, ask yourself, are you good enough? Ask yourself, are you good enough to stand up as a student, as a son, as a daughter, as a leader of society? It is your responsibility to keep your parents happy, to protect them, to keep India better, to keep yourself better and keep learning. Because these days will not come back. Six months down the line, you will have to think and ask, was I disciplined? Was I good enough? Did I embrace the challenge? Did I believe in myself when that adversarial, invisible enemy called COVID-19 was challenging our discipline? Just like a Greg Chappell challenged Saurav Ganguly. Just like an adversarial coach challenged Saurav Ganguly in his career. These are important moments of life lessons for each of us. Sort of some quick questions. Time's running out. Uh, you know, one question is, uh, you know, how did you manage academia and cricket together when you were a student? Is that manageable? Very much manageable. I did not have all the cable televisions. I did not have, most importantly, the mobile phone, which takes half of your life these days. You know, I see my little daughter at home and she's done exceptionally well in student in ISC. You know, she got 98% almost in ISC with 100 in mathematics and 100 in economics. She's ready to go out and study in the UK, in one of the colleges from the new year. I see the amount of time she has the phone in her hand. So for all of you, just use your phones and everything just, just for a chat. Give your time for your education. Give your time for sports because sports is the best thing in the world. You know, there's nothing better if you're a successful sportsman. So give time to that. When I grew up, I had no other option. No television, no mobile phones. I would study and to get away from study, I had to go and play because if I was at home, my mother would make me sit with the books. So I picked up a cricket bat, I kicked a soccer ball and just became better. There's, there is no substitute to practice. There's no substitute to putting effort and work in what you want to do. So the only way to be successful is, is put everything you have in the profession you want to do. There's one question that's coming constantly, Saurabh, how to keep positive, how to keep uh, you know, spirits high. Uh, there's another one that I've been sent uh, Apart from online education, what else can the teachers do to help the students develop life skills? Do you think at these points in time, the role of a teacher becomes that much important? One, they have the tools. First, they need to learn the new tools because they have not been exposed to these. And some of them are, you know, uh, senior citizens, more than 50. So for them also, it's a challenge. So everyone needs to embrace this challenge together. Do you think that this is a synergy between student and teacher, just like public and private? The student-teacher bonding at these COVID times have become stronger than ever. And, and just not teaching, teaching, just not academic teaching, but more grooming, mental teaching, positivity, passing on the right message. That's how the teacher can help the student. Do you agree? The teacher student bonding is the best bonding and the most important bonding for a young boy and a girl because you spend more time with your teacher than you spend with your parents. You know, parents are working, kids are in school, kids are on online education. My daughter will go to college, your daughter goes to a uh, a nursery school so they actually spend more time with the teacher and the teacher grows up as a friend over a period of time you know the other day my my wife was telling me that and i didn't know about it she said you know why sana took bengali as an extra extra chapter she was in isc i don't know correct me if i'm wrong you need to just 
study four oh. subjects yeah. four subjects to to do well but she had five and i didn't even know that and my mother was telling my wife was telling me that she took that fifth subject as bengali because the bengali teacher was her favorite and so that she could come and teach and she could be paid a salary because she came from a normal normal bengali background uh, that she could be paid a salary and she could teach sana and sana could spend time with her that's why she took bengali as a fifth chapter in her isc exams beautiful and i was i was so happy to hear that and i did not even know because obviously i did not pay so much attention yeah. mother looks after the kid more than the father because the father is busy uh, learning it re- leading a professional life so i was very happy to know that in at the age of 18 and 19 you were so considerate about your teacher and i think that's very important because i feel that's the best relationship which can ever happen is a teacher and a student my maths teacher who was my teacher in class 7 still visits me every day he stays close to my house onindu sir you you also know him and i meet him more often and and i see so much happiness in his face when he comes and meets me so fabulous think, it is it is the it is the greatest of relationship and a relationship for the teacher who actually become like a parent to the young students beautiful before i tell uh, ask sort of one or two more questions i'll tell you one quick one from my end you know why s chan group is so important in india we are told we need to learn and give examinations i i have always been a very good student i've topped all my life university exams college exams but when i went to oxford when i went to oxford my supervisor asked me uh, the first day and first day uh, i did not know how to footnote i actually did not know how to footnote so the difference is and this is something very important for each one of you listening to us don't learn to give exams that's a practice you need that you need the marks you need the the discipline but it is also important to learn learn there is a difference between learning sort of ganguly's leadership skills and going out there there is a difference between giving an exam and learning what s chan that you know uh, they are being able to do now with all of the new tools is they are helping you learn they are not helping you become better exam givers in india we are all very good exam givers but not real learners and that's where the difference is being made at these covid times sort of when did you recognize your true potential Uh, did you always know you will stand out, or did you? Uh, was there a sort of a period in your life when you realized, okay, I can go the extra distance? You don't know your true potential. I firmly believe that you should do the job which makes you happy, and then work every day to to achieve excellence. A lot of people spoke about how I played the cover drive so well. A lot of people spoke about how I hit those sixes so efficiently. When I was growing up as a young batsman, I couldn't do it. As I played more cricket, as I played at the top level, my confidence became more. and then i started to have faith in me you know every time i step out to a spinner i will clear i will hit those sixes and i think it's with everyone success achievements is a process it happens every day you don't you don't pick up a cricket bat to be the captain of the country you pick up the cricket bat to play score runs get better and then some day you may be captain of the country it's like building an innings when you take guard at zero you don't you don't see 100 because that's too far you look you think about the next run you think you get to 10 you get to 15 you get to 20 and i think success is like that if you if you want to be a if you want to be a professor you have to work every day to achieve brilliance if you want to be a doctor you have to go to the hospital every day to be the best experience the patients work with different patients it's like in, as a batsman you score runs all around the world then you build the confidence and become a better player so it's about a daily process of success and it doesn't happen overnight beautiful last 3 uh, 4 minutes uh, uh, you know on on my show so to to basically i've got time for one more question but let me say before that before i give the last words to saurav i have known saurav for 28 years now 28 years since our school and college he was my senior in sensarias and uh, since then it's a family relationship uh there is a professional relationship i do media work i reach out to sora for interviews there is a professional relationship but more than that we are family you know why because when you are in crisis when you need help you need support when you need mental support you can reach out to sora and we share that bond we share that bond where we know we can stand up for each other and that is what these times are all about that is what leadership is all about he can bring smiles to the faces of people 
And that's what he has done with Indian cricket when he was captain. That's what he is doing with the BCCI as boss. That's what he will keep doing as he goes ahead, stages the IPL, sends the Indian cricket team to Australia, builds confidence, instills confidence, empowers people, makes them into true leaders. That is the hallmark, according to me, of a leader in crisis. And he has forever innovated. He did not have the six packs. He did not have the Salman Khan body when he opened his shirt at Lord's. He did not. He had these, these, these Bengali, uh, uh, you know, uh, sort of threads around his neck. He still wears those. And, and he yet dared at the most conservative of English bastions to open his shirt and wave and tell the world this is a new India speaking out. Use these times, folks, to tell the world that a new knowledge superpower is being built thanks to the facilities that are being provided to you by people like S. Chand and company. Sort of last word to you, everyone listening. You've been an absolute role model, a, a role model who, according to me, I don't call many people heroes, a true hero of this country. So at these times, all of us need that element of positivity. Give us that in the last couple of minutes. You know, as I said, it's, it's tough times for everyone. I'm very happy to know that Delhi is under control. Hopefully at Calcutta also we'll get it under control in a, in a, in a short period. But just be careful. And at this, at this instance, as I said, it's about believing that I won't get infected. But that does not mean you do, you, do, you do unnecessary things. Please follow what the doctors have told you. Please wear masks. Please try and stay indoors. Please keep social distancing. Another most important reason of success is discipline. And I think for all of us to come out of this situation, we all have to work together, act together. And discipline is the most important aspect in this situation. We know there is no vaccine yet. We know there is no medicine yet. But we can all do what we are told. Maintain social distancing, carry the masks and make sure we wear it. I know it's not easy. A lot of people have breathing issues, but still do it. It will protect you. It will protect the person next to you. And as I said, you know, as you very rightly said at the start, you know, this is a, this is, it's a different world. The vaccine will come soon. It's like batting on a, on a, on a rank turner at the moment. With the ball spinning, with the ball bouncing, you just need to back yourself. But I'll fight this period. I'll fight this period. And hopefully once I get set, I'll be able to score runs. So give your time to get set. Because as they say in cricket, on a seeming pitch, the first hour is for the bowler. And the rest of the day is for the batsman. So it, it's time for the bowler now for you to handle this first hour and then make everything fine for you. Excellent. Give COVID nine months. It started in March. Give it till December and the rest of the life is yours. That's what Saurav Ganguly is telling you. Give COVID nine months because it's a good bowler. It is a good bowler. It's an invisible bowler. It has all the skills to infect you. So till then, give it time. Carry this sanitizer. Wear a mask properly on your nose, not on your chin. The moment you do that, put, put, the, put the mask so that it's all covered. Each one of us are doing. Look, we are in Calcutta, but we are doing physical distancing. He's at his house. I'm in mine. This has been an absolutely brilliant session from one of the most brilliant people that this country has produced. And a brilliant people who leads by example is an embodiment of empowerment and someone who I have the privilege of knowing very well. And I have the privilege of saying that he is the future. The future not only of Indian cricket, but in many other spheres. Saurav Ganguly, pleasure as always. Pleasure as always to listen to you. Pleasure as always to interact. And what you've given us is not simply leadership lessons in crisis, but life lessons in crisis. May you feel more empowered. Stay healthy. Stay safe. S. Chand and Group, absolutely amazing work in the digital space, in the online education space, in the offline education space for 80 years. What does 80 years tell you? That's credibility. That's credibility for a long time. You've batted just like Saurav Ganguly did. You've got a double hundred. We will come back next week again. We will come back with two more because there are more life lessons in the offing. And students, you can trust these people, Saurav and S. Chand and Duke. And I, I, it's been a privilege for me to be able to bring this to you. Back to you, Priya. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Borya. It was genuinely a wonderful session. And there is a lot that we've learned today. There is, there is a lot of crisis that individually everyone is going through. And it was important for us also to take this session and explain give all the educators who are joining us with these important life skills and leadership lessons. Mune, over to you. Mune, I think you need to unmute you need yourself. You need to unmute yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Am I audible? Yeah, you are. 
thank you yeah. so much uh, i second what priya is saying it was personally for me it was a really very helpful and engaging session and it's uh, not very often that you get real life lessons in leadership from somebody who has done it all so it's been an awesome opportunity for all of us to learn from you and thank you boria for making it such a relevant and interactive session for all of us once again thank you to thank both you. of you for uh, letting this happen and we look forward to the future sessions also thank you all the educators also for being participating in this and we look forward to interacting with you in future also thank you for all your time thank you thank you sir thank you so thank much you. stay healthy stay safe everyone thank you